I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is overcoming loss and succeeding anyways. Bottom line is sometimes in life, shit happens that is absolutely, totally, 100% out of your control. Your best laid plans might not work out the way you want. Your girlfriend or wife, even though you might do a lot of things right, maybe you got complacent for a little bit and then you find out she's fucking another guy or she leaves you for another guy. What do you do? Do you take her back if when it doesn't work out with the other guy? Or do you tell her to go fucking pound sand so you can go and find somebody new who will be faithful to you? I've learned over my life, I mean, a lot of things happen that are unexpected. I mean, you, you could spend 20 years building a business and due to dramatic changes in the market or a new technology comes along that makes your business model totally obsolete. I mean, we're seeing that when you look at what's happening in the malls. I mean, technology is completely disrupting all kinds of industries. And you see companies that have been, been in business for decades seemingly going out of business overnight. And at some point in your life, and I'm sure previous times in the past in your life, things have happened. They were totally out of control. Maybe you lost a friend or you lost somebody close to you or a girl you really liked and wanted and you finally got the nerve up to ask her out and she rejected you. It's like, how do you overcome that? How do you deal with it? I've got a lot of friends and family who have served in the military, and I also have a lot of clients that I've coached over the years that have served in the military, and they deal with survivor's guilt, and they come back after just horrendous, awful combat tours, and they lost friends. I mean, how do you deal with when you're talking to one of your best buddies who you went to boot camp with? And you've been fighting side by side for months on end. And then you're just sitting there shooting the shit. And all of a sudden, mortars start coming in all around you. And you run, you start running towards a foxhole. An explosion goes off. And you get hammered from behind. And it feels like a, like a giant tree branch hit you or something. And then you turn around to get the tree branch off of you. And then you realize it's the headless, legless, armless torso of your buddy that you were just talking to. And not only that, but you're covered in his brains, his blood, his bodily fluid, his bone, his flesh, and you're getting shot at and mortars are still coming in and you don't have time to, to stop and clean yourself up. And so as you're firing back and this stuff is just all over you, oozing you, some of it's in your mouth, and during a sustained firefight, you just end up swallowing literally part of your buddy who you were just talking to. It's like, how do you come back for that? Or I remember uh, one of the guys from, if you ever saw the series Band of Brothers, one of the guys who was, he was basically, they were standing in a hedgerow and one of his best friends turns around and he says, you stay here, I don't want anything to happen to you. And as soon as he goes over the hill, he gets mowed down by a German machine gun. And he's, this guy spends the rest of his life having survivor's guilt and feeling guilty that this other guy survived. I was like, how do you deal with shit like that? I mean, those, I mean, those are horrible situations. I had friends that were in the, in the Iraq war. I mean, what do you do when you've got to fire your SAW, which is, stands for Squad Automatic Weapon, into a crowd of women and children because you've got insurgents in between them all shooting at you and your brothers in arms with an AK-47? You don't have any fucking choice, but you've got to shoot back, and you know you're mowing down women and children that just basically got in the way. What do you do when a, a beautiful little 8-year-old is walking towards your position and she's kind of got her hand in her mouth like this and you can tell she's got a suicide bomb vest on and you tell her to stop and she won't stop. Why? Why won't she stop? Well, because insurgents have kidnapped her whole entire family and they said, if you don't do this, we're going to kill all of your family. And so you got to mow her down. I mean, how do you deal with shit like that? How do you come back and learn to let go of horrific memories of things like that? How do you deal with a business disappearing overnight? How do you deal with a relationship ending? I mean, these are pretty, 
life can throw some really fucking intense situations at you. And the thing that you got to realize is that 300 years from now, nobody's going to give a shit about you or me or what our credit report was, what we spent our lives or our, our lives building businesses or what careers we worked in. Nobody's going to give a damn. So what you got to realize is that everything in your life and everybody that you love and you hold dear is going to eventually die and dissolve. That's just a fact of life. And one of the things that Steve Jobs said about that during his Stanford commencement speech, he said, you know, you can't spend your life living it according to other people's expectations. Your time here is very limited. You can't spend your life trying to live up to what other people think you should or you shouldn't do. The only thing you can really do if you want to be happy and you want to be fulfilled in life because you only have a short time and if you're watching this, the days that you've been on this planet is getting longer but the time that you have left is getting shorter. And one of the things that he used to do every morning before when he got up was he'd look in the mirror and he'd say to himself, if today was going to be my last day on earth, would I, would I still want to do what I am about to do today? And he said that when the answer was no too many days in a row, he knew he needed to change something. And so if you've got a business that you've wanted to start, if you've got a girl that you've wanted to ask out, or if you've never really been very successful with women, but deep down you know you're a great guy and you deserve a great woman in your life, take the time to read a book like mine and apply those principles so you can start changing your life because... There's going to come a point in your life where it really will be your last day here. It's like, how do you deal? How do you get over survivor's guilt? The only thing you can really do is honor their memory by living at your best personally, by being grateful for the fact that you're still here. And as long as you still have breath in your lungs, you still can do something about your life. You can still make your life into what you want it to be. And I've got an a email here from a, a Twitter follower. And they say, I love your tweets, and I was wondering if you have any advice for someone like me. I'm 35 years old. I just lost my mom a month ago and my dad eight years ago. I feel very lonely, and I'm single. I have a great job, but lately I feel like I just want to be in my room and have no contact with others. Thanks for your help. Well, I mean, that's obviously under <coughs> excuse me understandable that you're going to feel some grief for losing your family member and the way to move past things because human beings we tend to suffer when we don't accept reality when we don't accept what is i mean the bottom line is the past is the past there's not a damn thing you can do about it because what is is what is the only thing you can do is accept it and move forward and if you feel like crap if you've lost someone recently or there's something has happened in your life, or you have a breakup that you still haven't gotten over, or you got dumped and you still haven't gotten over that, take the time and spend and sit in a room by yourself, sit in your bed and cry and wail and s express whatever is inside. Because you have to feel it to heal it. What most human beings tend to do when they suffer or they have things that they don't like, or they're suffering with survivor's guilt because they come back from really horrendous combat tours is we tend to drink too much we tend to do drugs we get we turn the radio on we watch tv we work excessively we exercise excessively some people eat food they treat food as a drug just to try to numb the pain and avoid from having to experience feelings or thoughts or emotions that feel crappy i mean the bottom line is part of the human condition is some days are going to be great, and some days you're just simply going to wake up and you're going to feel like shit. And the only way when you feel like crap is to spend some time by yourself and be authentically present with your feelings and your emotions and just be okay with expressing whatever it is inside, however horrible it sounds or however horrible it feels. Because what happens when we have a thought or we have an emotion and it doesn't feel safe, to deal with things at the time, that emotion 
if it's not experienced, gets literally stored into your nervous system as muscle tension. And the only way you can get past it is you have to feel it. You have to authentically feel it. It's the only way that you can heal these things. And for people that are using alcohol or food or drugs or excessive exercise or working 10 times harder than they normally would because they're just trying to avoid and run from the pain, well, what you resist persists in life. And like I said before, the reason that we suffer is because we want things to be other than they are. I mean, the bottom line is, like I said, you've got a certain amount of days left here on this planet. And so if you're working a job that you totally fucking hate and you've always wanted to change jobs, but it's like, why? I mean, 300 years from now, why would you want to stay in that crappy job? Nobody's going to give a damn whether you worked a job and you were miserable your whole, your whole life because you thought it was what you should do. You need to get off your ass and start working towards building the life that you really want and deserve so you can become the person God created you to be. And if you have people that you've lost or relationships that have ended badly or ended suddenly and you're still having a hard time getting over it, the best thing you can do is get back on the horse and start working to create something new because there's always more victories that you can have. Sometimes it may take five years or the better part of a decade to figure out a business model for that thing that you've always wanted to do. I mean, it took me several years before I figured out how to become success, how to figure out the successful business model for my coaching practice. Because when I started, I had no idea how I was going to do this or succeed. And whenever you decide to do something in life, what you want and how it's eventually going to work, I mean, in my case, most of the technology that I use today that enables me to help people through the internet, through YouTube and things like that, or my website, it didn't even exist when I came up with this crazy idea to get out of real estate several years ago. When I look back on it, you know, I got out of it before things totally crashed and imploded. But if I'd have stayed in it and not honored the feeling that was in my heart, I would have lost everything. I would have lost all my money. I would have lost my office building and everything because I would have been stuck with mortgages on, you know, on a two and a half million dollar office building and several million dollars worth of, of homes that I had that because I, I had two houses. And you know, it's interesting. One of the things that Steve Jobs said, he says, you really can't connect the dots in life going forward. You can only really connect the dots looking back when you look to see how things were important that happened. Like something will happen while you have an experience. You'll say, well, that was really cool, but how is this really useful? It's not until several years later that you're looking back and you go, ah, you can connect all the dots and see how everything flows together. So when is now a good time to start working towards creating the life that you really want? That's something to think about. So if you find this message of value, you can show your appreciation by going down to the Wibia toolbar, which is on the bottom of the screen if you're watching this video on my website, and click the PayPal donate button and donate any amount that you feel is equal to the value of the information in this video. At the very least, please share this page with all your friends and family by clicking any one of the social network sharing buttons, which are also located in the Wibia toolbar. And if you've got a question that you'd like to ask me or there's a topic that you want me to cover in a future video newsletter, just click the Contact Me tab on the left-hand side of your screen and send me three or four paragraphs detailing your situation or your challenges and give me several days to get back to you. It may take me a week to get back to you because i gotta, I got to take care of the stuff for my paying customers first, but just be patient. I will get back to you. And if you'd like to hire me to coach you personally over the phone, Click the Products tab at the top of your screen and just follow the instructions for booking a paid phone coaching session with yours truly. And I will talk to you soon.